Welcome back to the Hillbilly RV channel. Today, we're on the beautiful Greenbrier River here in southern West Virginia. Oh, we've got a gentleman here who has some problems with his water heater. It don't work. <laughs> uh, it's not making hot water. So that's a problem. If you want to take a hot shower, I guess, or you want to wash dishes with warm water, or you want to wash your face in the mornings with a warm washcloth, then that could be a problem. So we're gonna try and fix these problems today. Um, been here just a few minutes. It does light on gas, but he'd really like for it to work on electric. So we're gonna see if we can figure out what's wrong with it, see if we can fix it. I thought I'd take y'all along. So y'all ready? Let's get started. All right, so we got our classic suburban water here. She's probably a six gallon. Um, got a few things here. Um, it's got that switch down here that Suburban lo he loves to use. That interior switch, which I usually don't touch those unless I have to. Uh, we've got uh, thermostats here. And they do have a reset button in the middle of them. And they're not, they're not kicked. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get this cover off these thermostats. And uh, Start checking some powers with my meter. Of course, you know, they don't, why would they make this easy? I mean, this, this screw is pretty easy to get to over here. And uh, the one right beside, uh, the one on the other side of the cover, of course, is uh, right behind the gas line. So you can't get to it. So. That one's really bad. Uh, it doesn't have a screwdriver slot. Let me see if I can get a screwdriver in it. Be a shame to have to take the gas line off just to get a screw out. So we start checking some power. Oh, I got her moving. It's a weird angle, but. It wasn't tight either, so that's good. The reason I want to get this cover off so I can start checking power is just because typically this is the easiest place to get to the power on a suburban water heater. Um, I'm not mistaken the power comes in through a junction box up here on the inside of the uh, water heater goes down to this little indoor rocker switch and then comes up to the thermostats goes through the thermostats back down to the heating element which is down here. <laughs> I'm gonna have to take the flu off to get the cover off. I love when they do stuff like that. I think it's just a couple screws in this. couple plus one. I guess that makes three. Now, now we'll show you how to get that cover off. Now one, one, one of these thermostats is for the AC side of the water heater and one is for the DC. So what we want to do is figure out which is which. 
Let me, uh, let me zoom y'all in a little bit. Because people get all excited when they, when they can't see what's going on. Get your old trusty meter out. Put it on the AC scale. First try. Catch a ground right there on the gas line. Let's see here. So we got power on that side of the thermostat. And we got power on that side of the thermostat. So next place we have to go is the heating element. So getting, getting that cover off can be a whole nother situation because it's behind the burner tube and the gas valve and all that. It should have three screws in it, but I think, I think there's only two. There is a drop one. Huh? I dropped one. Oh. <laughs> It didn't need three anyway. That's what I thought. Yep. There's our heating element. Get our meter back out. Put it back on the AC scale. Get power going in. And power coming out. All right, now that's odd. So why isn't it making hot water? Let's check across the element. If we're still getting power across the element, then we'll have to take the wires off and uh, check the ohms across the element. Because it's sure, when it's getting power, to the element, then it ought to be making hot water. All right, we're getting nothing across the element. It still seems odd. Seems odd we're getting power on both sides of the element. Because one side's neutral and the other side is the hot. Let me go grab another tester. We'll go right here and test the polarity on the entire system. So we had a yellow light and a red light. We come up here on top, hot and neutral reverse. There's your problem, lady. Uh, somehow, some way, the hot and the neutral have gotten reversed. I'm gonna go inside and double check a couple more outlets, but yeah, looks like, looks like the hot and the neutral have been reversed whether it's in the, you know, I don't know where he's plugged in here. This is a privately owned river lot, uh, so there's no pedestals per se. Somewhere, had some power get mixed up. All right, so uh, I did go inside and check a receptacle. Same thing, come out here and check this receptacle. Same thing. Let's, uh, there's a main, there's a main panel box over there at the meter. And then we have this one. So I wanna go in here and look in this box. See what's going on. Looking at the colors, 
everything looks good the neutrals on the ground bus but that's uh, that's not uncommon at all and I believe it's even I believe that's code it's old code it's not new code uh, so let me go get my meat everything looks right because the uh, the black wire with the yellow stripe is uh, you know that should be our neutral here's a here's a hot leg coming in um, and here's another hot leg coming in so I don't know where we have gone awry here I I don't know. Let me think about this for a minute. All right, I was gonna take the receptacle apart outside at the back of the camper where the shore cord plugs in, but I couldn't get the screws out of it. So I'm gonna come in here to the panel box. see what's going on in here all right so our main our main coming in is up the top um, so it looks like an orange an orange cable back there and then our neutral is right there what I'm gonna do is take, I've got the, the breaker turned off back here for the pedestal. So I'm gonna take the hot and the neutral out of here. And we're gonna do some more testing here. See if it is, make sure it is truly a hot and neutral reverse situation. All right, customer went back here and flipped that breaker back on for me. So let me see if we can figure out what's going on here. Hopefully, y'all see my meter there. So let's go go to ground and let's go to neutral all right yes we have 123 volts on our neutral and we have no volts on our hot wire so we truly are our hot and neutral are reversed so what i'll do is uh just go out there and unplug the camper and we're going to work these wires around and we're just going to hook the neutral the white wire up to the breaker and the black wire uh onto our neutral bus bar now that's not really the best way to do that but i can't get that box apart back out there so this is the next logical place um uh, Customer's right here with me, so he knows exactly what's going on. If there's any issues in the future, then he'll know what I did today and how to put it back just in case. Because some were either, I don't know, either out here in your receptacle, pedestal, or over at the main service coming in, the hot and neutrals got reversed. Um, I mean, heck, it could be on the uh, power coming in from uh, the power company. I mean, stranger things have happened. But uh, yeah, let's get this switch route around and see if uh, see if it doesn't fix our water here. Alrighty. So we're hot and our neutral has been reversed right here. 
cut all these breakers off. Go back out, plug the camper back in. We'll come back and do our final testing and then uh, start flipping breakers. So let's go from ground to over here. And yes, we have power there. And now we no longer have power on our bus bar. So now we're going to get brave and we're just going to start flipping switches on. Because that's how we do it. All right. Let me uh, plug my tester in the wall here. We now have two yellow lights, which is correct, Amundo. We got 122 volts, or 23 volts. So that is, everything's correct now. So now we should be making hot water. I want to go across the element and see if we have power there now. Because we didn't before, we should have. But we didn't have power when I went both terminals of the heating element. All right, so before when we were doing our test now here, we weren't getting power across the element. And we're still not. So what's that mean? Not getting any, not getting any power out here now. Okay, what's that? Make sure we're on the AC scale, we are. Okay, so now I wonder if our switch is bad down there. Because those switches are notorious to go bad. When the hot and neutral were reversed, we were getting power through the wrong side. Now we're not getting any power. So maybe that's why things were a little bit wonky down here. Yeah, getting nothing. So, all right, let me uh, let me gain access to that switch. So I turned the breaker off that is marked for the water heater. Right one, I don't know. Probably find out here in a minute. I'll either get shocked or a big big spark here and kick a breaker. One of two things. Sometimes I get them marked right. And these wires are always like super short on these switches too. Uh, might end up having to take the gas line off. Yep, it wasn't marked right. We kill all the power. Yeah, so the water heater was marked, the bottom one, but it's truly the second one up from the bottom. I mean, they were close, right? Only one off. Only off one. That's pretty good. It actually gave us a little bit of wire on that. I was able to get that switch out. We know it had power coming in. Let me go cut everything back on. See if uh, power is coming back out. I'll just grab. Is any of this making sense to y'all? I ain't, I ain't going to lie to you. It kind of... It kind of throws me for a loop, too. So we know, because it's got a little burnt spot on it now, that the bottom one is the power coming in, and the top one's power going out. There's no power coming out of the switch. We double check the power coming in. Get on that terminal. Yeah, we got power. Well, got power coming in the bottom of that little rocker switch. No power coming out. So, let me go get a. Actually, I'm going to talk to the customer because typically when those rocker switches go bad, I just delete them. Um, because I don't recommend anybody ever touch that rocker switch. Um, because like I have said in the past, as a interior grade switch, they don't make an exterior grade rocker switch like that with two spade terminals on the back. So 
usually what I do, I just make a little jumper wire with two male spades, put those wires together. If you need to turn the water heater off, now he knows which breaker it is. I'll fix, I'll change the label in the breaker box. If he needs to cut the AC side of the water heater off, he can just kick that breaker. So that's probably what we'll do because as I was talking, he's shaking his head this way, not that way. So, that's a yes. so we're gonna, so we're gonna, we're just gonna bypass that stupid switch because we can put one in there and it may fail six months from now or year from now, but it will fail, guaranteed. Because, I mean, why wouldn't you put an interior grade rocker switch on the outside of a camper? Makes sense to me, right? Not really. So there's my little jumper wire. Don't you uh, electrical engineers just turn away. Just turn away. Don't even watch this next part. Matter of fact, don't even listen to me while I go. Just go back in time and uh, just don't even don't even listen. You don't need to know what I'm doing. An interior grade rocker switch. Yeah, I I did that. That's that's me. That's where I let it short out. So we'll just plug these two wires together and we'll tape them up good so they won't ever touch anything that they ain't supposed to touch. Suburban's the only one that uses this switch out here. Atwood water heaters either either turn the breaker off or they may give you an interior switch that you can cut off. The Suburban's the only one that uses this switch out here. Like I said, I don't touch these switches. Never touch that switch unless I have to because usually if you touch it, it will fail. A uh, pretty, pretty significant amount of time, it will fail. So that's why I don't touch them. I don't, I recommend my customer don't touch it. Because if you start turning it on and off out here, it seems like that switch will fail even quicker. What I'll do is uh, just stuff them back in that hole where the switch used to be and uh, get them stuffed back in there good so they're back in there and I'll probably just put some silicone over that hole to keep uh, keep water and, and uh, bugs out. Alrighty, so those are all taped up. Stuff them back in that hole. Try to anyway. You other mobile guys out there, do you delete this switch also? Or do you just put a new switch in there? I usually leave it up to the customer. If they want me to replace the switch, I will. I've got them on the truck. I just think it's ridiculous to replace a part that you know is gonna fail again. Not maybe, but will definitely fail again. It just doesn't make sense to me. If any of you guys out there are watching, guys or gals that work in the shop, of course, you could do this and not even tell the customer. But us mobile guys, usually the customer's sitting there watching us, so we have to clear it with them first.
it's almost as hard stuffing it back in at home as was getting it out. All right, let me go cut everything back on. Y'all stay here. See if you hear that heating element sizzle. Yeah, they don't always sizzle. What we can do is check across our element now, again. See if we have power going across the element. If we do, then it should be making hot water. Ta-da! See that? All right, so we now have power flowing across the, the heating element, which should make it hot, which should make hot water. I got a lot of stuff put back together. Won't y'all put some stuff together, some thoughts, some comments, some criticisms, concerns, drop them down there in that comment section. We'll start a discussion. Let me know, let me know how stupid I am and how dumb a repair this is. I mean, I just don't know what else to do. Hot and neutral was reversed. It didn't have anything to do with this switch failing. Uh, the switch just failed. It feels funny. Don't feel locked up, but it's bad. And uh, so we had two problems. So that's all we can do. Two problems. Peace out.